Let me um. Let's hop on something, something a little bit different. It might be serious or it might be fun to talk about. Um, Sabi, so Bruno Salvati, right? Uh-huh. Invite invited you on the um, I forgot what that was called. It that was, was like the, it was uh, like a forum panel, thing. Black pa- the black panel for yes. vote, black voters panel. When she asked you to come on, did that come as a surprise to you? Was that, it it what, did because I because I know my mouth, B. I know. My, listen, I'm X rated. Like, I, 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 <laughs> so you know, if you notice on the panel, I really didn't say any much. I didn't you say were like much, what he I said. Don't... You were like what he said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't want to get tur- like my chicks are on. Uh, she, she said, "Cloud, don't go up there acting a the fool because you know you get to sweating. You get to pa- you so passionate. You 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 so be always in it. So I was. You see me. I was smoking. I was trying to stay calm, but they. Everybody else on the panel was going off. So there was no need for me to, to be hostile. I didn't have to. I said, it, listen, they feeling the same energy that I feel. So mm-hmm. they, and they articulating it better than me without the curse word. So I'm yeah. good. I don't have to be on here. But I like when she's, say- she's like, Cloud, is this, do you want to follow up on that? You're like, nope. <laughs> they said it all. <laughs> <laughs> they said that ain't what I was thinking. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, because, you know, I like, yeah. I like, I remember I was, she was like, Cloud is you gonna have to be um kind of I said okay I, I'll try okay. you know what I'm saying so, yes um so let me ask you something what set off this um because you and me I'm a sports guy you're a sports guy you, you and, yeah. and you, you work a lot of hours me I, I only sleep three hours a night because I'm up editing I'm you know I'm podcasting I'm I'm a commentator I'm, I'm a coach a, I, so I'm what Charlie. what set no but hold on what set your activism button off. Like this, what set was it? Was it just watching Sabrina's show? Yeah, dude. I just started. You know what's crazy? <clears throat> the crazy thing is, um, I don't know. I had got to just start watching these different podcasts. Mm-hmm. I don't even know how I came around Sabrina, dude. It's been probably almost a year that I've been watching her now. Because mm-hmm. um, I used to just watch and just follow her on in the chat. I never said anything. I never used to say anything. But I had been there watching, mm-hmm. and I was like, I had came on calling one time, but I never said anything because, you know, like, because I don't know how people are going to take my, my, my brash delivery because I'm not going to, it's hard for me to tone it down. You know what I mean? It takes a lot for me to, because once I get really, if I get really, and if I'm really passionate about it, I'm really animated. And that's what my homegirl said. She said, you're very animated. And people like that. They like that a lot of times. I don't even be, I just, I don't be mad or anything. It's just that. I feel so, this is how I feel about something. I feel this deeply about it. So I really don't give a fuck how people take it. So I kind of try to like, kind of stay reserved to myself. Cause I know when I get, I'm, I'm really, I, it's good. It's not a spoonful of sugar with, with me. You know what I'm saying? The medicine, I'm, it's just, I'm just raw medicine, B. It's it is what it is. Cod, you know, cod it's, liver it's, oil. It's, it's castor hard, oil. It's, swap, it's, it's castor oil. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, it's hard to swallow. So if you don't like that, then you might want to ask me because it's going, you're going to get the unadulterated answer with this. It's unadulterated. Do you, so. do you agree with her assessment? Actually, let me, let me start. I remember Malcolm X said right. that like Republicans you already know what they're going to do because they say it proudly that to them Mm -hmm. that's their virtue you know and their passion so you see them come so you see them coming a mile away so he compared so he said one was a wolf right one was the wolf and one was the fox yes and you can actually you want to take that over like the fox the description of the fox showing his teeth showing his teeth like he's smiling but go ahead so the thing about the, the the wolf and the fox is the fox, the wolf is going to come as he is. So he's not going to hide who he is. The fox is a little, it's a little smaller creature. So they have to be. Looks harmless, right? Looks more harmless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's demeanor does, but they really are worse than the wolves because if they get up close enough on you, they'll fuck your ass up. I mean, I live in Texas, so I always seen them. I got big Rottweilers, but the fox is really, um, I had to get my Rottweilers to fucking chill out because them, Sometimes we the, the the foxes and the rabbits they'll be coming to try to get the rabbits. If these these if I let these these wolves out this mouth these these white wallers out this house they they get to shooting off after them. So, but you they, they're easy to they they look more harmless than what they really are. They really pack a punch. They, but that's their that's their the allure of them because they look so un, um 
they don't look as as, uh, as threatening. They're so non-threatening. But the closer they get to you, they can really tear your ass up because they're really, they're really, they're really, if, to, for their size, to be in the wilderness, they're very dangerous predators but, for their size. But, but even more dangerously, like the teeth looks like a smile. And it looks in, right. it looks inviting, it looks, right? It looks, and it looks, and then and then you're gonna so, get then you're gonna get lunch on. It's so alluring f- factor. Yeah. It's yeah. Because it looks it looks pleasant. Because like like, like you could pet him. Like you could pet him. It's a cute thing. You ain't trying try to he, pet a wolf. Who trying to pet a wolf? Ain't nobody trying uh, yeah. to pet a wolf. No, right? because so, he's yeah. he gonna let you know off the muscle. You listen. <laughs> he gonna show his teeth. You gonna look. You gonna say, let me get a let me get some distance between me and him. Whereas a fox, you be like. Oh my God, he was so cute. Oh my God, let me pet you. And that nigga tear your ass up. You know what I mean? And so, yeah, that's what the Democrats and Republicans is. And you know what the crazy thing is, bro? Um, I've always kind of be, been an uh, uh, activist, kind of, because every time I talk about politics, it's always, I've always been very, um, I learned about politics early in life, you know what I mean? But I never really applied it to my life. You know what I'm saying? Until I got started getting older and started seeing things differently in the world. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Um, no. and so like I said, But I that's was what born, I'm saying. Yeah. I, I was, wanted you to continue born, with that. I was born on the day that Malcolm X died. February twenty first, um, nineteen sixty five, I think he died. Sixty five he died. Hmm. February twenty first. I was born February twenty first, nineteen seventy six. My favorite movie is Malcolm. X. I still cry anytime I watch that movie. I still cry. Oh, the, Den- the Denzel joint, right? I, I, yeah, yeah. I yeah. still the Spike Lee joint. Yeah, I still cry every time I see my nigga Malcolm go down, dog. It, it still hurt me every anytime I watch that movie, dog. When that part come, dog, and I know they finna take him out, B. It hurt my me favorite hard every time. But yeah, cause you kind of see it coming. Get your hand out my pocket, right? Right. When right, you right. saw but that scene, is, I, yeah, I, like I. I read his autobiography. I wrote the, the Alex Haley one. I read the, the Alex Haley one. That's oh. the best one. To get. If you're going to read the Ma- autobiography of Malcolm X, you need the one r- written by Alex Haley. That's what I'm that's the, that's the real one. So that was my favorite book. So I've always felt a deep connection with him anyway. You know what I'm saying? And um, no uh, disrespect, but like, like um, my homegirl, she said, you always know, have any snow buddies in your I said, yeah, yeah, I have snow bunnies, but I'm I, I'm just playing right now. When I get married, it's going to be to, you know what I mean? So I've been out being wild, you know what I'm saying? But I've always had the activism. I think it's just most black men anyways, if they were raised. Like, my pops raised me right, you know what I'm saying? So, like, at, even at 48, I don't have no children because I ain't been, even though I've been wilding, I ain't been wilding, you know what I'm right. saying? No, like, okay. I've been very, very conscious. And trying to be an example, like my, I only got two nephews. My brother that's underneath me is four years younger than me. He's the only one that has kids in my family. Like I had my two older sisters. My older sister she passed away in '07. Then I got a, oh, okay. another sister that lives in. She lives in Virginia. She worked in D.C. Yeah. Uh, she lives in uh, Fairfax in Virginia. She was uh, in the military, whatever. But anyway. So the one thing I so, liked about that movie, um, somewhere at the end, he took a trip to Mecca. Yeah, and I'm not a deeply religious person, but but just yeah. like watching a bunch of men, right? right. Just men, not, you know, no, no children, no women, just just men having this place where they can migrate, um, and uh-huh. the, and through this migration, they there's this feeling of just getting their mind right, you know, right. and then you and then you kind of leave, you leave Mecca, you know, your head's a little higher, your chest is a little more puffed out, you feel like you're ready to do things that you think a man should do. So there was something, and I mean, and I I know I sound like I'm being sexist or chauvinistic about it, but I swear I'm not. I'm not going that route. I'm t- I'm just talking about letting a man be a man and and how he's supposed to carry himself. Right. And that that and, that part of the movie, and that's the I mean that part of the movie touched me emotionally, and that's not everybody else's favorite part. But just speaking so for I, myself, I, I to turn it like this, but for a black man, even like even more, you know what I mean? Like because. It's a different landscape for us. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, like yeah. I was telling Sammy back, and I told her, I said, you know what? My dad told me something when I was younger. Um, he told me this when I was in my like early years, six, seven, eight years old. He said, listen, you're black. He said, you already got two strikes, strikes, two strikes against you, bro. Jeez. And I never knew. I never did the knowledge until later 
on as I got older, I, I did the knowledge. He said, but you, you got two strikes against you. Huh. You're black and you're a black male. Right. You already got two strikes, bro. You don't got, you don't got a lot of room to operate. You come, you come into the plate 0-2. Yeah, dude. You at, yeah, you at the plate 0-2. Yep. Yeah, you're already down 75. Man. You're already down 75, B. Yep. You're 75 points behind, B, already. At the, at, you said, that was at your birth. Yeah. I had to learn that. Yep. You know, my mama taught me, my, like, my mother's African-American, right? And my father's white. Right. And she taught me that white people have a career, but black people have a responsibility. Right. Um, right. And right. it's weird because I know a lot of black people think I could get away with things because I'm a few shades lighter. And, and they're not wrong about that. I, you know, I can, oh, I can, I, 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 I can, I can like, roll with the pack and, and I could be, and I could be a white whisperer. Yeah. Yeah, you got the complexion with protection. I, can, yeah. I can't hide. Yeah. I can't hide wherever I go. Yeah. I'm, I'm six three and some change, and yeah. I'm dark skin. So and and your hide. blackness ain't sneaking up on nobody. Ain't nobody gonna look uh, at you and say, "Oh, he's uh, Dominican. Yeah. He's Dominican." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yankees won. Yes. Good. Get rid of that. Uh, good. Good. Yeah. Um, Athletics, man. To hell. To hell with them. Okay. Yeah. But um, yeah, dude. So like, I have to. Even though I could, I've been in a lot of different spaces. I've never had to change who I was because I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna transform. Like I can go to any any setting and, and fit in because I have the knowledge and I had the upbringing to, to respect myself. So anywhere I go, I don't listen. You're not gonna talk to me crazy. I don't give a fuck how much money you got, who you think you are. You're not gonna talk to me crazy, yo. I, agree. I don't care about none of that. Yeah. And guess what? Put your pants on just like I do. One leg at a time, but you No, you but it, 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 it's so not even just like Sorry, go ahead. No, but it, but but a lot of times, um and I learned that some about these a lot of these, these black dudes down here in the southern areas, a lot of them they like they are scared of white people. Like I like my home like even like when I was working with the uh, I was working with the Mexican dude, he was like, Cloud, you like them white because I said, Yeah, I said, I don't I said, listen. The thing is, white people are really easy to get along with. They really are. Is y'all do y'all have y'all got a inferiority complex that I don't have. Like they I don't feel like they're smarter than me. I don't feel like I don't feel no type of way about them. I don't have I don't I don't pose no threats to them. They I put I don't I'm not threatening them. They I just my being here it poses a threat to them because they, what am I doing here? You know what I'm saying? But the thing is, once they get around me, my personality shines and they gravitate towards me because guess what? I I really ain't got no malice towards you. Most black well, people don't have no malice. It's just that a lot of them are scared to be in spaces with them because of all the trauma that they have. The thing is, I'm not that. I'm not that dude because I'm black a- and I'm Indian. So like, listen, Y'all really owe me more than anybody around this motherfucker. Because you done killed both my both sides of my family. So at, I feel, at, at, I the pl- at the plate at the plate Owen too. <laughs> um <laughs> yeah. and I'm still listen, I ain't had the same means as you, but I'm still in your same area as you was at. And I'm shining and I can pull your bitch too. I will I, Yeah, I can pull your bitch while I'm here, yo. And have a listen, have a feel this type of way when I put this thing on her. Yeah. The biggest, yeah. all right, Cloud, here's the thing. The biggest lie in in this um, socially, uh, you know, political thing happening is, yeah. the biggest lie is this. Someone says, I don't see color. And I think that's absolutely ridiculous. I think you do see color and you have the active choice to celebrate that. Right. Or you have that choice to, to, to have an, an instill fear which you don't understand. And when you right. have, and when you have a fear which you don't understand, you know what comes next: uh, a bigotry, right? You're kind of setting your ways because you you ain't trying to get involved in that, or even racism, right? Because because you feel you're so scared of what you don't understand, you feel inferior, so you're gonna say and do things that make you feel superior. And racism, by definition, is the inherent belief that one is superior or inferior based on their race. So, right. so 
I, 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 I just want to thump this home. If this, if we only talk about this clip for the last fifteen minutes, um, okay. and and you're definitely gonna, I want you to jump in after I say this. Don't fall into that. I don't see race thing. See race, recognize it, embrace your this culture as being different and beautiful. Embrace this culture, right? Have have a room where we're all a bunch of Chappelle's where we could tell a joke and laugh together, right? If we're ever in a in, in a state of that utopia where we can tell jokes and we can poke fun at each other and laugh together because there's no fear, there's no insecurity, there's no this, there's no that. You know what I'm saying? It's just a little bit of, you know, sometimes a little bit playful, but as long as you're celebrating it, because the celebration is a common denominator. It's the foundation. So um, right. like like Be Easy would say, I'll land on that. And I, want, I wanted you to get your thought. <laughs> you know what? Like they say, and like I said, I got my, my, like one of my best friends, his name is Jeff. That's the white dude. That's the cowboy fan. Yep. He said, like, if I, you know, when, when I, when I bring him around, like he's one of them cowboys. I mean, he's like the one of the white dudes. He got crazy tattoos. He's from, he was, he's from Germany. Okay. And everything. Yeah. But you look at him, he look like, like a, like a, like a redneck. If you look at him. Yeah. So when I bring him to the club and they see me bringing him to this dude, look like a redneck. Look like a plow boy. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. Um, they're like, man, who is this dude you bringing? And if you've seen the white dudes that I hang out with, they just, but they're average motherfuckers, man. They just want to be treated. They because people look at piece of clouds. You know what? You've never looked at me and never treated me like anything different, dog. He said, I don't really know you, and he said, I know your family. I know your mom. He said, Yo, your mom and dad treat me more like a, a son than. Most white people do. You know what I mean? He said, white, sometimes I come in this spot and white people look at me crazy. He said, but you never, he said, I don't care where you at, bro. He said, no matter where you at, you, even though you look like this dude and you a straight up dude, you be in all these spots where I wouldn't He said, I'll be uncomfortable sometimes. I said, how you uncomfortable? Dude, I'm the only black one in here. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm the only, only black person in the goddamn building. How the fuck is you uncomfortable? He said, no, Cloud, he said, that's the thing about you. He said, once people get to know you, they gravitate towards you, even though you look like a straight gangster dude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And he said, but once you start talking to them, he said, because he said, man, you be fucking my head up. Of all yes. different things, you know. And that, but I, that was the cool. Like but that was the cool. Go ahead. No, I said that was the cool thing about having you on that black panel. The the two most important things. Let's say I'm white, and I'm and I'm really not. I'm, I'm a Flatbush kid, and I yeah. uh, I identify. And in this country, if you're fifty fifty, you're black. But yeah. let's say a white person wants to understand something. You learn two very important things. Black people are not a monolith. Like if you looked at that nine person panel, there was right. no. No one even similar to you. No one even close. No one, no one similar to Be Easy. Be right. Easy is this this wonderfully like this college educated, articulate dude that has a he has like an urban twang to the way he talks. Yeah. But like yeah, the yeah. language, the language is just high level, high octane. And I hope to have him on the podcast. But the the two most important thing is one. If anyone wants to know more about politics or whatever, understand this: black people are not a monolith. Right there, there we they're just like white people, they come in all in shapes and sizes. Right, even though sometimes you know us black people ain't got time to dice up our white people. The second well, thing uh, uh, I learned uh, that people will learn, or people need to learn, is this whole notion that the vote, the democratic vote, uh, and black people are, are are supposed to hold hands this election. I think good. I think people are gonna be in for a surprise, dude. I think because people are going to be in for a surprise. Because you know what? The, 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 because a lot more black people are getting becoming, they, they, they get, they've, they've waking up. They've, they've been a, after the Obama administration, dog, it really woke black people up. That was the best thing, and the, it was the best thing that could happen to the black people. They, yeah. got, slapped, they got slapped in their fucking face, thinking that it's just because just it's a black dude in the White House, thinking it's going to change for us. Yeah. And he gave, he showed us our, he showed us his, he showed his ass to us. I yeah. thought after the second, after, after the second election, after we got elected the second time, I thought he was going to really just pull his dick out and, really, and just say, and pull his, you know what I'm saying? And just say, fuck everybody. Because the way they were treating him, you know, he was the first black president. 
So I thought he was really going to act a fool because he can't get reelected. So he could do it. He, he, could go, he could go crazy with executive orders. You know what I'm saying? He could I go think... crazy with executive orders and just do whatever he pretty much. He, cause that, 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 listen, the president has a lot of, he has a lot of power. So yep. that shit talking about, oh, Congress and the House, oh, man, fuck all that. I when think what wants- we learned. Go ahead. I think no. Um, I'm, I keep interrupting. Finish your thought. I'm sorry, yeah. brother. What 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 we don't understand and what we don't understand about the president, he has the ultimate last say. If he uses executive order, that's the that's the biggest fuck you listen. Remember what Biden did? He just sent the he when he went did the executive order to send Ukraine a hundred million, right? He did yes. that earlier this year. He, he said, "Man, I'm writing an executive order. I'm going ahead and send a hundred, a hundred million of fucking Ukraine, right. even yeah. though Congressman was opposing it because they wouldn't let that that, that, that was the um, part of the border bill because they had they had the package for Ukraine. Remember, they wanted to send money to Israel, yes. but they didn't want to send Ukraine no money. Uh, and yeah, but you, but Ukraine is the Ukraine is the side chick. You knew we were going to take care of Israel. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, remember Zelensky was over there talking hot shit." Early in the year, because they weren't sitting in the fund. He wound up a now, cold, cold fart. <laughs> he was talking hot shit, and Congress was like, "We're not signing that shit because we ain't not sending you no more fucking money." So they were like, "Man, we don't need to send that." Yeah. Before we jump off on that, you said something about like Obama. We okay. All right, we elected him, and in many ways, and for me, he's for he's me, no, but for dog. me. For for a lot of people, he was more disappointing than for me uh, than he was not. Um, but I want to go chronologically. Where were uh, you? Where were you the night he got elected? Shit, when he got be, elected, what this, what were you doing? Where were you? Check this shit out. My no. ex chick, my ex other ex chick. This is the white lady. She was like eighteen years older than me. This is my chick Sally. <laughs> There's was, always a chick with you. But go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, look, look, look so. I was in Jacksonville because this was after my sister passed. So I was in Florida for like um, 08 from like, I went to Florida like, um, I went to Florida for like six months. Okay. So um, that was a year that the, um, the Devil Rays and the Phillies was in the World Series. So I was in, I was in St. Pete in Tampa at that time. Okay. And um, I went, and, and so I had went to, uh, Jacksonville, because I got a partner that lived in Jacksonville. I drove to Jacksonville. So I'm over there building with my, my partner, and she called me, and she was crying. She was like, oh, my God. It's just the greatest thing ever. I'm like, man, I said, yeah, it's cool. You know, like, I was cool with it. You know, it was cool that he was, I said, yeah, but I said, I'm still skeptical, because I'm going to see what this nigga going to do, dog. You know? Yeah. I was already had that in my back mind, like, yeah, okay, so he's here now. You know, all these niggas were celebrating. Right. And I was like, yeah, but he yeah, asked. Well, what for is me. That do for us? What, for, is, what is him being up there? What is he going to do for us? I was kind of excited at first, but I was still skeptical. You know what I'm saying? Well, for me, and, I was less skeptical because in my lifetime, like 2008, I was 38 years old. So in my lifetime, to date, up to that point, no one in the no commander in chief has done anything to make my life better or worse. We had Bush and, and Bush messed up the whole country kind of Clinton supposedly made the, 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 the whole country better. You know, Reaganomics, trickle down economics, this guy, Bush. So all of these people I had in my life, no, none of them have done anything to significantly make my life better or worse. So when he got elected, I was in Harlem. I lived on 148 in St. Nicholas. I, and 148 in St. Oh, Nicholas shit. is as close to Yankee Stadium. You can hear the organist. You can hear the guys like the second right, right, the right, second right, baseman, right. Derek Jeter. Right? So okay. so traffic stopped. Everybody right. and everybody just got out of their car. And and it was and I'm just I'm not talking about uh the disappointment. I'm just talking about we're talking about the chronology. I'm talking about being a prisoner of the moment. Mm-hmm. It was this nostalgic like we, like it's finally happened and now everybody can chill chill can chill the f can chill the f out you know with this whole black white thing so that was my initial i'm only i'm i'm going through like timelines so but that was my initial chronology yeah. right and the other thing i liked was that when i was like somewhere on the other side of the world ukraine russia japan they're gonna be like who's the president of the united states they see it's that guy and they're like all right cool he's sane he sounds educated or right, you know we're, we're gonna be okay with this guy right so so it's so there were so many things that made me think we were gonna be okay with this guy yeah 
No, but think about it. On the other side of the world, like back then in 2008 or 2009, when you found out the president was Obama, you're like, Ooh, okay, cool. Nobody, no, no, no crazy ass right, Bush, right. you know, Nick, no, no Dick Cheney who's hell bent on war and profiting from it. And for sure, Trump didn't even come until like eight years later. So that was right. my chronology. And right. so one good thing happened and, and a bunch of bad things happened. Let me, let me do the good thing. Cause it, uh, the good thing stands alone. Okay. Barack Obama signed a bill called VRAP. It's veterans retraining assistance program. So uh -huh. basically, if you got laid off through no fault uh -huh. of your own, um, the first 40,000 veterans who apply for this, this VRAP thing, they uh -huh. pay for your two-year college, they'll pay for uh -huh. your trade school, the books that come with it, um, so they give, you, they give you X amount of money that's, that, that pays for that and whatever's left over, you can spend it on rent. So I got laid off at that time from Wild right. Cornell. My boss retired and they laid off the entire staff. Um, right. And I went to real estate school and through VRAP, because I'm a veteran, I'm a Gulf War vet, um, yeah. that put me through. And I was like, yo, this is the first time the president actually signed something that affected me directly. But right. then, now that's the good part. Now here's the right. bad. Uh, I, I don't like this whole droning people, uh, you know, like one terrorist, 30, 30 civilians, let's just take them all out. I don't like that. I don't like that people were spying. They were spying on American citizens and, and he knew about that and he allowed that to happen. Well, I don't like I don't like he, he I don't like that he promised to um, clean up Wall Street, but he enlisted the same people. Uh, to clean up Wall Street that actually got us in trouble. So that's like putting that's like ha asking a junkie to guard a drugstore. Uh, so so there were there were a lot of things that were like, you know what? I like the guy and I think and I'm glad he broke the barrier. But and, and I can and I, I just I, I felt like, OK, I just got to live with these disappointments. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, you know. Um, yeah, the, the nostalgia for me was was kind of different, you know, what I mean, right. But had we known that he really wasn't a nigga, nigga, he was a. a, a, a uh, one of them uh, cheddar. Puna, who is for Hawaiian. He, he, he was a cheddar. That's what he was. He was a cheddar. He was a nigga. It looked like a nigga, but he was a he was what you he was a real Oreo for real, because he yes. really did nothing for us. Damn, you've been you listening I mean? to Ice he Cube. Did, he did nothing to protect black people. Most, most, <laughs> most of the hate crimes went up during his, his his. That's when the hate crimes really. We was already getting our asses kicked by the police and all that old shit, but the. The, the, the hate crimes really started getting out of control. You know what I mean? You started seeing a lot more people getting gunned down, you know, Trayvon Martin, all these things, all of Tamir Rice and all of them. Uh, different Gar things. Yeah, Garner too. Mike Mike Brown and Staten all Island, dudes, Garner, Eric Garner. Yep. Eric Garner, all that shit was under the bottom. And he never did anything mm -hmm. to my Trayvon Martin. He could have been my son. Bitch ass nigga, but why you ain't doing nothing about it then, whole ass nigga? He should have been signed that shit in. Uh, 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 and, and he could have been did a, and you know the crazy thing about him was what makes him so sort of disappointing because after his second term, when you're not coming back to the White House, you're not coming back, you're not get, you're never gonna be reelected ever again. You could have did whatever the fuck you wanted because you got the bully pulpit yes. too, punk ass nigga. You know I agree saying? with you because yo second and term should have been anything. Yes, he act like his hands was tied. You, you brought up, you, dude. You brought up a very good point because for the people listening, a little education. When people get elected, their their goal once they get elected is to work on getting reelected. Everything right. else is a distant second. But with that being yeah. said, like you just said, when a president is only two terms, right? Go buck wild. Do the right thing. Do the right he thing in that second he term. He could have went berserk his last, just, just like just like little Bush. He did pretty much what he wanted to. That's the thing. That's why you say the Democrats, they're full of shit. They talk about what they can't do, but when they sit back and watch the Republicans do whatever the fuck they want. They don't really, like, there's no, listen, they don't, the Republicans don't care about when they want something, they're going to do it. Mm -hmm. And they don't care about how you feel about it. They really don't give a here's, damn. And, but they, but. It's here's, the but the problem is, here's the, where both the, the Democrats put the glaze on it. Yeah. They put that glaze on it, dog. They, so well, they put, it, it, no, it, but when really you get through shit. the glaze, there's no donut. Yeah, you, you, you get through there. the glaze, there's no donut. 
Yeah, it's, it's, it's glaze covered shit. That's what okay. it is. There it is. So, so, it's, so it's either nothing at all or something gotta, really bad. <laughs> yeah, it's really not that great. It's the same. Hey, listen, old dude over here just got shit for sale. This nigga got glaze shit. So what do you want? You sale. want glaze shit, huh? Okay, it's still a crack thing. Buy it's one, get one free. Let's yeah, go. It's still, it's still, listen, after that glaze will, will go away, guess what you got? You got the same damn thing. Yeah. You ain't no different. Yeah, here's... You know they just their packaging looks yeah. look a look, look little sweeter. Now I, they, I lean more left than right, but here's where I gotta agree with you, right? They talk about the existential threat of abortion, but here's the historical fact is Obama had sixty four codified it. Yes. His first that's term, what, they, had six, was, they had remember, sixty they had sixty four members. He was, he was running on codifying the the, the, the um right. the Roe v. Wade. Right. That's what he was saying in his first term. He talked about he was codifying. And he right. played around with it all this time. The thing is, they listen. These people, they, 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 they act like they ain't friendly. But behind the closed doors, when the lights, the cameras, and the action ain't on, y'all, they at the same country club. They, they walk around in the same circles. Yeah. They get paid off by the same people. It's like wrestling. Yeah, dude, it's, it's, it's all an act. It's, it's like it's, wrestling. It's, Jesse it's Ventura. Jesse tomorrow. Ventura said they're in the ring, acting like they hate each other, and then, but when, and when the match is over, you yeah. know. Alright, alright, hold up, hold up, hold up. I gotta turn the clock. This is a few yeah. years ago, nineteen eighty nine or nineteen ninety. Hacksaw uh -huh. Jim Duggan, a wrestler, yeah. gets no. arrested. He's in the same car with the Iron Sheik. And everybody back then that thought wrestling was real, how are these right. two dudes getting busted for drunk driving? And they, they one's in the passenger seat. This one got a yeah. two by four in one hand and the beer and the other going, oh, right. And I was yeah. like, that's how you knew I knew wrestling was fake. The yeah, Iron I, Sheik got arrested and he was I, pee drunk with, with Hacks, the guy he just fought. <laughs> Hacks right. or Jim. Right. Duggan. Yeah. So, yeah. So how, 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 how hostile could they be? With each other, you know what I'm saying? But I didn't, I didn't do the see. Well, you said in '89, I was probably like, let's see, I was 14. Yeah, I was 14 then, mm -hmm. about to turn 15. All right. Yep. So, yeah. So, like, I was still watch wrestling. Like, he, he, my my uncle, he still go to uh, all the wrestling things. Mm -hmm. My dad's young, youngest brother. Yeah. He watches all that wrestling. He still goes. Those I was. Back, like, Anytime WrestleMania is yeah. in New York, he gonna be there. I got as far as Batista when Batista came up. That, See, um, I had went, I had went on a low like after like I, like after Stone Cold. Yeah, so, no, no. So I wasn't. I didn't get to watch Stone Cold because I had got locked up. Like I went, to, I went okay. to prison in '95. Okay. I was. I, yeah, I got locked up for eight years, so I really wasn't like. My so you said like '93? Like, yeah, '95 is when I went. Okay. I was like 19 at the time. So uh, ninety three, Hulk Hogan was slamming the giant, right? Macho yeah, Man, no, Macho Man, no, and Ricky no, 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 Steamboat that's had that's like that's match of the year. No, 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 no. Back in ninety three, that's when it was Chuck Bogan and Earthquake. Oh, and Hulk, that's right. Hulk, Hulk, Ravish and Rick Rude. See, like I, I was Ravish a big fan of Million Dollar Man, and I love Ultimate Warrior. I like Big Boss Man. Did I you? Liked it, uh, yes. Did you I know? Like, me, you I, know, Million Dollar Man was on Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. At, um, he, was really, the, really and, though. he was really he was really rich yes and yes he, my dude I mean, you like know what Rob, you guy. know what robin leach said robin leach said the dog had caviar the bodyguard had champagne and i got squat <laughs> 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 That's what Virgil did. Virgil gave he had two glasses of champagne. He gave Ted DiBiase one, and then looked at Robin Leach and started drinking the second one, staring him down. I was like, yeah, "No, you didn't just pool, do that." Right? Yeah, but I was I was like that. That's when um Randy Savage was with Miss Elizabeth. You remember because yep. oh, Mister No, Miss Elizabeth went to Hulk Hogan. No, so Lex Luger. She went to Lex Luger. No, no, no. Miss Elizabeth went. She, remember, she was with Hogan because he got her free. Oh, for the story, yeah. At, and he, him, and Savage went. Went at. Did you remember it was him and Savage at first? Yes. But him and Hulk and they broke up because the way he was treating Miss Elizabeth. Yes, that was it. That was scary. the story. Then he, got, then he came back with Scary Sherry. Ooh, remember? I remember that. He came back with Scary Sherry after a while, and it she, was Miss Elizabeth versus. She was, uh, she was kind of hot, Hogan. man. You know they yeah. call her Scary Sherry, but I don't, I don't know. She's kind of hot, dude. <laughs> you know. No, but she, she was. She was scary hot. She was the scary hot. She. You know. You know. I, 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 I'm like a couple of chicks that I messed with, man. Uh, 
the, I, I like them, 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 um, them, the golf chicks, man. They something, man. They something about them golf chicks, man. They drive me crazy, dog. <laughs> Man, they be talking about oh, them, man. Talking about golf bros. But they, they look scary, but them damn dope look. Them mm-hmm. girls be fooled with it, boy. I'm telling you. Yeah. So let me <laughs> anyway. I, let me ask you something. Um, I got to go in a little bit, but I had one last yeah. question. And I asked you this on the chat. And everybody wanted to answer, but I think everyone's, when I asked it, everyone's wheels were turning. So it was silent, but I was feeling people's thoughts. And I was, was like, and the question was, Donald Trump, I wow. said, do you think, I said, Cloud, Cloud, before you go, do you think there might, there might be another attempt between now and the election? And oh, when yeah, I asked yeah. that, everybody was like, wow, could there? <laughs> like, everyone was like, could there? Dude, but the crazy thing is, look, we haven't had, since, since, since Reagan, which was like, what, 83, 84 when he got shot? We haven't had one since Reagan. You know what I mean? This it's man done, done had two in in a two month period, or or, yeah. may, or maybe even a one month period. I don't even. That's Listen, they're, they're very close together. Dead. Yeah. But the crazy thing is, dog, he was almost dead. Like this. Look, if, if he don't, if he didn't turn his head, turn, it was a, by the grace of God that he's still alive. Baby. Yeah. If he don't turn when he turned, because you know he'd be fidgeting, he'd talk, and he'd move around a lot. If he would have did that and turned, dog, he we would have watched an, a live execution on TV, B. We would have seen it. We would have seen his head explode. And I don't want to talk too much about weapons on YouTube, but that type of weapon was was more than capable of making the shot. You know, yeah. I'm I'm I'm, I'm ex military, right? And the M16, the A2, the maximum effective range is 460 meters, not feet, meters. So yeah. Uh, so if I can make that shot with that with yeah. that weapon, I know I think he had an AK or something like that. Not an AK, he had an AR. But um, and again, yeah. I'm, I ain't trying to get in trouble with YouTube about talking about weapons because we can talk, we can talk yeah. about sex all we want, but weapons be gone too far, right? right, right, right or or, right. or or saying the word Israel is like you you saying the word candy yeah, yeah, candy yeah. man yeah, three, yeah. candy man yeah. candy man candy man three times. So so yeah, let me go ahead, let me but go ahead. It's it's crazy that like I was saying the other day when we was on, I said the crazy thing about it is we hear the truth, but the lie as as, as an outlandish as the truth may sound, mm-hmm. and it be the truth, we will believe the lie yeah. because we are so in a bubble. Like Americans are so Americans have really been really um, brainwashed. You know what I mean? That's the thing. Like they haven't. They've had the wool pull over their eyes for mm-hmm. so long that now that they, the government is not even hiding this shit no more. Like I've been saying, you know, like they don't even hide these things no more. They sit, sit here and play right in your face yeah. and then tell my, oh, you, that's not what you, who you, who you going to believe me or your mm-hmm. lying eyes? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you going to believe me or your lying eyes that you see me over here doing this shit. That's the, the saying. Trump, the yeah. thing about Trump is, that he told like like that that skit when I was saying when we were, uh, Dave Chappelle was on SNL when he came when D- yes. they elected Donald Trump the first time he said yes I did it because I'm smart I remember that I remember that that whole no, no he he said he said everything that you think they're doing they're doing it and then he went back in there and he said and Donald Trump just went back in there and and, and closed the door he said yes. he came out he said everything that you think they're doing they're doing it. Yes, and then that nigga ran back, right back in the White House and closed the door. Well, my, doing well, everything, everything that you, every conspiracy that you can think that they've done, or they have a, a movie or something about it, or or you heard about something, they doing this shit, <laughs> and that's the problem. That's why he's a threat because mm-hmm. their lies can no longer be told. Yeah. That's why he's a threat. Well, here's the thing. He, I'm not. He doesn't play. He doesn't play the game the way that they play it. Here's the thing. This and is my this is my last question before we bust out. Me. Okay. I'm not voting for Trump because I think no, no, no. I think anybody that can be like that debate that they had, all mm-hmm. someone had to do is come out like me and my wife. My wife bleeds blue. Okay, she's a Democrat, but I told my wife I was like, "Look, Trump's debate skills. He's gonna bake this girl." But I think well, what happened? No, but he, no, hold on. Here's what happened. Someone whispered in her ear, "Just say your crowd size is bigger than his." And she, when she said crowd size. This dude lost his ash, and I cannot vote for somebody that is um, that is emotion so emotionally triggered 
by that, right? Now, I want you to keep your thought, but I do have a question for you. Does, even though I'm my own person and I'm a vote for whoever I want, and, I'm, and I do like Jill, Jill Stein uh, uh, for, yeah. for, for, for some reasons, but I want her to do more standing up for it as opposed to opposing it. Stand for something um, instead of like oppose everything. But um, do you think that what's been happening to Trump are driving voters into the arms of Trump? That was my question. Of, of Kamala? No. Do you think uh, the what's been happening to Trump, the assassination, the, the persecution, the court cases and all that stuff, do you think that's driving voters into the arms of Trump? Do you think the disappointment uh, of, I, of, I, of people leaving the Democratic Party uh, um, I, is, is, is automatically meaning Trump going to get the votes? Or are but, they, yeah. they going to vote the couch? But uh, Yeah, yeah. But, and the crazy thing is, that's why I, I, I kind of like this late surge by Jill Stein. Mm -hmm. I was happy about that Breakfast Club interview. Yeah. Because, like, my dad, like, my dad wasn't going to vote. I, got, I convinced him. Like, because my whole family, like, we go, yep. like, we, we go as, as, a, as, a, as a group. And Butch so, is a real one. Yeah, and Butch and Butch is a real one. The VP. Mm -hmm. Yo, Butch is a real one. And look, that Breakfast Club interview really opened black people's eyes. Like, there's a third option. I just remember, like, a few months ago, I was like, I remember I had told one that dude from um, from the the uh, the Green Party camp, the Green Party dude. Yeah, those dudes. Chase Oliver. I said, well, y'all really need to get into the black community and preach what y'all got, what y'all are offering. Right. I said, because a lot of black people are they're they're like the the, 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 the sheep in, in the, they're like the Israelites in the wilderness mm -hmm. when God had them out there for you know saying for forty years out there just wandering around they're looking for guidance they're looking for uh, the, the, that that star you know what I'm saying yes and if y'all really preach what y'all what y'all what y'all got on the table y'all could easily sway the black voter and y'all have the black vote over there at the Green Party y'all need to get your message out so that interview with the Breakfast Club that was a really powerful interview and I was glad the way they did it. I was yeah. glad that it went down the way it did and we start seeing these black places, these black faces in high places that really wanted to stay on the blue plantation, right. which is a democratic plantation. Right. Do you and, think and, and, do you and think for, for the wolves that they really are. Do you they really are wolves. You well, know what I'm saying? Yeah, and do you so, hold on, do you think do you think it caused a Streisand effect? Meaning that it it drew more eyes on Jill Stein instead yeah. of drawing instead of drawing and people it, away. It, I think it. I, I think it drew eyes, and it, it, especially with a, a, a with a voter base that's really disappointed in the Democratic Party. They're looking. They they a lot of black people really just want to vote vote for Trump because of the border policy and the economic policy. But if they look at the whole a whole pie, and they really see what Jill Stein got to offer, the dog. It was a no-brainer for me. Like I was convinced way early when I just heard her policy. It convinced me early. You know what I mean? Nice. I was rocking with Cornell West at first because I was telling my ex chick, I was like, "Man, I'm rocking with Cornell West." I was telling her, I was telling her, and she's like, "Oh my god, he looks so radical." Because you know she didn't even know who he was. He was right. black. She didn't even know who Cornell West was. But that's like even, she's a low IQ. I, uh, like a low IQ voter. You know, there's a lot of them out there. The thing is, the American education of the uh, public system... Trump's going to get them too. <laughs> kids mm -hmm. And crippled a lot of Americans because they were all caught up in this dream that there's the American dream and, and a pick, white picket fence. Those days are gone. And a lot of people start to feel that. And a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, the middle class and lower class people are actually starting to wake up. You know what I mean? They're starting to see the world for what it is and see what our government really is, dog. The, the liars that they really are. You know what I mean? That's yes, why sir. over half of the country doesn't even vote. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like Jill Stein was saying, the voters that I'm getting are people that weren't even going to come out. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Or vote the couch. Like you said, vote, yeah. vote for the couch. The people that, yeah. the people that, are, that she's talking about, we take a vote for her, bitch, these people weren't even going to come out and vote at all. Yeah, they it's came not, out to vote. And, that, and, and that's not the... And that's the and that's the and that's the joke they were missing. They they didn't mm -hmm. get they didn't get the joke. The joke was they right. thought they thought that the, that was their vote to have and they yeah. lost it to someone. It was never they their even, it was never really their vote, vote to begin with. You, you know how many people I know that don't even vote? Yeah. They don't even vote. Let me 
I want to say one thing about Jill Stein. In 2016, I voted for her, and I thought I made a mistake because at the time, at that time, even I thought that she was she opposed everything that I mm-hmm. opposed, but at the same time, she stood for nothing. This now, this is 2016, right? But then I saw her go on Sab Show, and then I saw her do these appearances, and 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 when she started talking about the how. Instead of, oh, we're just going to stand up and demand us. We're going to go. We're going to go to their front door and knock and say, you have to give this to us, right? You, that, no, Jill wasn't talking like that. Jill had a plan. Uh, I'll, I'll sign this bill under this name, and that's how it passes. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll make sure I get with this, this, whatever, and this is how it passes. This I can do. This I could do via. Ex, this I could do. This I could do via executive order. And I, I was like, yo, finally. She's alive. Someone that doesn't just oppose everything, but stands for something. But, yeah, that, so now that, I'm, I'm leaning more had, towards that for, for those, those, all those reasons. She, she understood that she had been trying to play the, she had trying, been play, trying to play fair. When the deck is a stacked against you, you got to learn how to say, man, you know, fuck that. I'm not playing by the rules no more. Yeah. The rules, are, they don't play by the rules. So why am I going to try to play nice with somebody that don't play nice with me? And that's what that politics is about. And that's if the Green Party, could, as long as she, I mean, they've had a, a, a like she said, they've had a long run. Usually, them, 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 them kind of um, movements, they they're dead after one or two years. And if she's two not, cycles, and if she's dead. not a threat, why are all of these hired guns coming after her? Right, because she is a threat, though. That's it. Mehdi Hassan. Because, because more, because more people are looking at the two, the duopoly, and they're seeing it, and they're saying, you know what, these motherfuckers. Playing that, we here's, get played. Okay, here's who. Get, here's who. Still, it don't matter who is in office. We still get played. What, this is this is real change right here. That yes. Can happen. Yes. And that's how I'm feeling. Like this is an election. Yeah. That it could really the Green Party could really it could be like over there in London how we get a third party yes. to upset the, 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 the status quo mm-hmm. and, and change the landscape of the world, dog. All right, you now here's. Saying? Here's who did not piss me off, and here's who did. The guy that did not piss me off was Mehdi Hassan because I already knew who he was. Mehdi Hassan was a guy that went on British television and trashed the Daily Mail and talked about their conservative, these evil conservatives, you're evil this, you're evil that, you're, you're, you're against abortion, I have huge issues against abortion. And you know what the Daily Mail did? They posted on the internet. A letter, a five paragraph letter that Mehdi Hassan wrote to them, begging them for a job. And he says, if you hire me, I'll speak out against abortion. I'll speak up for conservative values. So he 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 already has a spine that bends both ways. So if you actually dealt uh Google did a good job scrubbing that from the internet. So you gotta really keyword and find it. But the Daily Mail is like, this is the guy that trashed us, but he's the same guy that begged us for a job and, and was willing to compromise his whatever. So he's he's the one that did not but he they was the, no, no, but he was the one that did not upset me because he has a collapse. He has collapsible vertebrae, right? He got a spine that bends wherever the wind blows and whatever will get him work. And, and, and he'll sell us behind to do that. Like, like now, now who disappointed that. me? The person that the person that did, did disappoint me was Angela Rye because Angela Rye could have just asked questions there. They do look Green Party. They they do. There are some concerns about them, and she should have actually just asked legitimate questions that weren't questions that were calls for a conclusion. Yeah, but the uh, and and is, she didn't do that. She was an absolute. She was an absolute witch, and I and I did not like that. You know. See, I didn't, back in the days, like I didn't know all these different, like when they were talking about all these. Yeah. I really never understood what all these different phrases they used. Yeah. All these monikers. That they you you should have saw the letter he wrote to the mail. He made sure he got the but balls. The thing, the thing is this that. I'll, the people that are trying to get into politics, they're already morally corrupt in any way. So a lot of times, they they once the money comes, it, what they because they have no more confidence. They have no more confidence, dog. So their integrity is already shot. They are they just like everybody hates thinking about they hate corruption until you in there get you get that money being corrupt. Everybody talking about how much they hate corruption. Man, that's that. Yeah, because you ain't because you ain't eating off of it. That's yeah. the only reason why you hate it. Yeah. Once, once you in it, you you love it like it ain't nothing. Yeah, this is you, why. You know, that's what you live yeah. for. And this is why, you know yeah, yeah. This, yeah. People yep. more corrupt with you know what I mean? They they said it's it's you know it says for the love of money is the root of all evil. 
Wow. You went Levert on me. You went straight Levert. He went straight Levert on me. So they need on wherever the paper's at, that's where they can go. You went. I can't, I can't, listen. I can't, if I can't live with myself, it don't matter how much money that I have. Mm -hmm. If I can't live and sleep and, and go to sleep, you know what I mean? Like back in the days when I used to hustle and everything, I had to be on edge because I was doing something immoral. I was doing something illegal. And so I had a, 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 my conscience of sleeping, I had to stay on point. Mm -hmm. But as, as I moved away from that, I sleep comfortably. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't have nothing to, I don't have, I'm not doing nothing wrong. Right. I'm living life how I'm supposed to live it. I'm not, now, don't, now, don't get a misconstrued that, that if it's time for me to get in the field, I'm going to get in the field because guess what? The same motherfuckers that tell me, oh, it's bad for you to do this, this. they the ones doing it at a higher level, getting more money. Doing it. Well, there's an old, yeah, there's an old they, saying. They, they, real, they, they talking yeah. about what you shouldn't be doing while they doing it all the while. Cloud, real, real crooks don't wear tattoos. They wear ties. <laughs> okay. <laughs> real crooks don't have that, tattoos. They have they, ties. That's how our politics is. Man. <laughs> you know, yeah. we're getting fed the crumbs while the rich getting richer. Yeah. We 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 out here struggling for, for crumbs. Yeah. When we shouldn't have to. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. Most Americans well, are out here. Most most Americans, average average American, that ain't they're they're working hard. They work hard working Americans are are struggling. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, a lot of them don't have don't want to have to do this. Yeah. Uh, the wild shit. You know what I'm saying? Like like how the uh, opioid epidemic. You know, like yes. these are upstanding upstanding people that were out here selling these pills, getting these prescriptions, and and getting these people addicted. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And, and the crazy thing is, they were taking yeah. money off the street, but you got good people really have to do bad things. They didn't want to have to do that, but that's the only way they can survive. Some people don't want to have to do that. That's why, you know, like most of the rap dudes that was back in the game doing all the selling the drugs or whatever have you. A lot of them, right. they were trying to get to a place where they didn't have to do that anymore. Right. Do you? So they, you know what I'm saying? And that's the average American. A lot of times, when you're back at the beginning of the world, you don't know how far a person's willing to go just to survive. Do you, you know I mean? can you appreciate? And, and that, that kind of leads into with the migrant thing because it, they come from a different moral code of the way, they're, the way, they're, the way their countries are ran that what we consider immoral, those are just the everyday things. Yeah. You know, can you, day, those are survival skills. Hold, 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 but can you appreciate? Go ahead, finish. You know, they look at it as, as this is how I've got to survive. Can you, know? you? But can you appreciate how why Sabi wanted you on that panel? Like everything you just said, like the last five ten minutes. Uh -huh. This is useful. It's productive. This is something that opens up people's minds. Like, wait, you know what? Maybe someone watching this will be like, you know what? Elections are won and lost all the time, but my values, you know, and how, you know, I want to look back a few years and be like, yeah, I, vo I voted, I voted the right way. And for the people listening, and we ain't telling you who to vote for. That's I swear to God, I ain't telling you who to vote for. I'm just saying that that you don't owe anybody your vote. That's all I was trying to say. I feel this is one of my favorite rappers. Today. Which uh, one? Who? Who? I, I, Ice Cube. Yeah. Ice Cube one of, he's been one of my favorite rappers. He's on the West Coast. Yep. To me, he's one of my, my he's, even to this day, he's in my top five. Like, Cube was, I used to get into it with niggas in New York like that. That nigga Cube was yeah. dope. Well, when, really you said, when you said, when you said Oreo, I thought of Cube. He always been black first. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so when he came on, he said, if somebody telling you to vote, and you, he said, voting is, is a transactional thing. Anytime you get up to go to the vote, you're supposed to get something in return from your vote. So people that tell you not to get nothing is because they already getting something. And they're getting something to lead you to them. They're leading you to the slaughterhouse mm -hmm. while they pocket is getting fat. So yeah. if anybody that tells you to vote and don't ask for nothing in return, those people are fucking false prophets, dog. Because they're yeah. only leading you to the stick. They're, they're leading you to the slaughter. Yeah. That's what they lead you to. Because yeah. if they ain't offering you anything for your vote, then what are you fucking you voting for? People, yeah. Black people, y'all need to get off this bullshit, okay? Because we, our ancestors didn't die for us not getting nothing for our vote. We should have been fucking used our vote. 
vote as as, as a, a leverage. Yeah. leverage. We, we went through a lot to get that vote, didn't we? We did to leverage our vote. Cloud, Cloud, we went through we went through a lot to get that vote. Black people are more American than some white people, bro. Straight up and down, dog. Because we we've, we've been here since the beginning of yes. since the start, and we we've, we've had to fight just to get be able to do these things. Yeah, it, we had to fight just to be able to read. We had to yeah. fight just just to be considered human. And we ain't even that still. They still gunning us. Your, your father's ex-military, right? Not to, to ask for us not to get them <laughs> for our fucking vote. <laughs> he he go, he going kidding? off. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? kidding me? Cla- Cloud, your dad was ex-military, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. Sab's father was too. Sab's father was too. Sabby, her father was too. Um, me, I'm gonna go for a vet. My dad on um, Vietnam War. My grandfather World War II. So, I right, got right, right. I got roots. I got roots that go to, go all the way back to World War One. So I agree with you, right. uh, in, in the in the literal in the figurative sense and in the literal sense. Fight, fight, fight. Right, I get, right, right. I get that. See, I, so my grandfather, and my uncle, yeah. my grandfather, he was like, Korean War, like World War, Korean War. Yeah. And my uncle was in Vietnam, and um, first off, my dad was in the first off. Right. So, like, yeah, we got roots here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But we fought in every war there is to fight for. Black people, we've been still struggling just to, just to be considered as people. And all the things that we fought for, dog, we've not supposed to be just giving our vote away to somebody that ain't giving us something back, dog. And, like, uh, I was listening to Dr. Umar. He said, since 19. 19- 32, not 1960-something, the black black people have been voting, because in the 1936 election, the voters of black people have been voting for almost 90 years for the Democrats, so they so left the public. So, so almost, well, right now, it's 88 years right now. We was talking about that today. 88 years black people. So it's been almost almost 100 years that we've been voting for the people, and we ain't got that. No, it's time to demand something. Because they owe us, and that's why Amen. a lot of people do all that to the fact because y'all owe us. Amen. Y'all the ones, y'all the, you know what I mean? We're Republicans and all of us, because I, I, I had, that was a, I the Lincoln election, you know what I mean? He was a Republican, it was. People don't understand that. We were Republicans at first. Yeah. But a lot of black um, values are really conservative. If you think about it, it's just that we, our community has been decimated by all the stuff that the, our government has been doing to us. Yeah. That we really have, we, we've had a foot on our neck since we've been in existence down here. Since we came to this country. You know what I'm saying? So, anybody that's letting up off the, you know what I mean? I, you know, black people, we're really not, we're really not like, we're really spiritual people. You know, we really get along with anybody. It's just that the hatred for us and towards us is, is, is there was no, it's no, it's not really, really, it's really no, um, reason for it because we've never tried to you know what i'm saying we just want to be and, and we want to live and, and and don't bother nobody we just want to be able to live you know what i mean but yeah um amen amen it's crazy bro you know what i mean but um yeah. i think i'm glad i'm, I'm glad that uh, um we starting to see these these these, these shields these democratic shields and these, these niggas that, these 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 boule niggas that then sold a soul and sold us out sold the river you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they they happy with what they can get from because with the black pockets, man, dog, if you know what it was up to me, I I put them all in front of the fire squad, dog. <laughs> like that's how I feel. I put I would line them all up in front of the fire squad. Dog. I would not well, that, because I, that that's the kind of spirit I had a revolutionary spirit that I feel like that you you you've already showed us who you were. You're worse than a white man, dog. Because yeah. you are just like us, but you're easy to be sell us off the river up the river, dog, without a paddle. So you know what? You don't get to be around no more because we don't need you kind of nickels like that around, dog. Yeah. We've already got enough that we fight for. And y'all up there just getting up there parading around and y'all ain't doing nothing for us, dog. But you're doing everything for everybody else. But when well, we need something, you're giving us nothing with your ass cheek. Guess what? Yes. If it was up to me, I'll line you up against the wall mm-hmm. and I'll go ahead and yeah. pull the trigger. Easy. And I'm a, because you know what? <laughs> if, 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 if black people really just think about it like Harriet Tubman on us. She was killing slaves. Like, that's what the thing is. You know, people don't understand. Like, Harriet Tubman, if you was a slave and you was, it was time for Harriet Tubman to creep off and leave, 
and, and you know what I'm saying? If you tomorrow, no, I'm not gonna go. Harry Tubman said, listen, if you don't go with me, this is where we part ways. And guess what? You going in the ground. This is where you nice. die. Because you don't get a chance to sell us out no more. Yeah. You don't get a chance to sell us out. Dude. Well, let me tell you what I'm happy about. I'm happy you came on the podcast. I'm happy like this is gonna require some editing, of course, but as far as like like making broader points, like this my favorite part was the second half. The first half, I loved I love that we had a, a message for relationships that you oh, and I okay. No, but sometimes there's this place under this place where men and women get to meet and talk. And sometimes you have to be you have to be there to get for 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 people to get the right answers or the answers they're looking for. But with that but with that being said, Clout um, I'm yeah. really, really grateful that you took time out of your schedule. I know Friday night is ten o'clock. You're probably gonna probably um if you're um, you're probably getting your oh, second I, win. I, 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 <laughs> no, I'll probably be on I'll probably be I'm telephone Teddy. So I probably telephone Teddy and I was supposed to talk to my ex chick. Right. She wanted to talk to me about some shit shit going on. Right. I was supposed to she told me, she told me after the podcast. So I'll probably telephone Teddy with her for a little bit. That's cool. She's going she going through some things right now. I'm helping her through this divorce thing because she she married a tether and he, he, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Crazy. Some women are right. just, you know. So, so listen, so for all of you at home, uh, Cloud, Cloud might love you guys, but I don't love any of you. In fact, I'm out of here. Okay, so for all of you at home, for all of you on your iPads, for all of you on your iPhones, who runs the world? Old school baby, desktop people. For my man yeah. James Cloud, I'm Jason DeBeas. This is the Option Podcast. I'm gonna hit my music. Stay with me. We're out of here. Come check out the Option Podcast on OptionDB.com. It's also available on iTunes and Spotify and on YouTube under the NY Varsity Sports Handle. You're gonna love what you hear.